Yeah, it was me whoring out and trying to figure out how to get uh, people who hadn't seen the show to sample the show, and particularly to get guys. So I thought, well, what would I see? You know, what would I seek out? And if somebody said to me, hey, they're doing 3D, I'd say, oh, I'll give that a shot. The, the sad part of that for me was when we actually got around to doing it and budgeting it, um, it would only give us enough money to, to do about seven minutes of 3D. So I directed the 3D sequences and we integrated them into the other parts of the show. The other thing was there was always a ceiling on how many people could watch the show based on how many glasses you could distribute. Um, and all the sort of ideas I had for mass distribution, NBC next, because the people involved weren't sponsors. We wanted to make a deal with Amazon where we'd be in every Amazon box for the month of November, but Amazon isn't a sponsor. Then we came up with a situation where we'd be on the, the counter of all the Starbucks, and, but Starbucks isn't a sponsor. So we ended up cutting a deal with TV Guide, which was changing the format. They, they were going from being a small magazine to a large format magazine. And that was very successful for them. They sold more TV guys than they've ever sold before. But for us, it put a ceiling on the, still on the number of glasses. Um, so, and the other thing, and I, this is my fault, it was a, a 3D broadcast, but it was the first HD 3D broadcast. And while the quality of the broadcast varied from cable system to cable system or set to set based on what kind of antenna you had or whatever, in HD, it was unbelievable, and we never publicized that. And NBC has an HD, you know, broadcast in HD. The effect was phenomenal in HD. So I always felt sort of badly about that.